One of the best places to be on a hot and humid day is on a stream. Hey, I'm Tim Koch with the Ashokan Watershed Stream Management Program. Today I'm on the Esopus Creek in the town of Shandaken, New York. We're here to do some stream bank erosion monitoring. Specifically, we're here to validate a stream bank erosion rate prediction model, or an erosion rate curve. Now these erosion rate curves can be used to predict how much erosion you'll see on a stream bank in a normal year. You can predict how far that bank will retreat into streamside property and ultimately predict how much sediment that bank will supply to the stream. The Ashokan watershed is one of only a handful of places in the country that has its own erosion rate curve specifically calibrated to the stream types we see and the geology that we have in the Ashokan watershed. So let's see how this all works. So first we look at the bank itself and we assign a bank erosion hazard index, or a BHI rating. Basically, how susceptible is this stream bank to erosion? To assign a BHI, we look at categories including the height of the bank, the bank angle, the depth and density of any plant roots growing in the stream bank, the geologic material, and whether or not any surface protection is being provided to the base of the bank from large rocks or vegetation. The second component of an erosion rate model is the near bank stress, or NBS. And similar to the BHI, NBS is broken into six categories, from very low to extreme. An extreme NBS can be seen in places where a mid-channel bar or a transverse bar is directing flow straight into a stream bank. At this site that we're surveying, this is a low NBS. The stream doesn't have much erosive potential towards the banks that you see behind me, in 2016, AWSMP funded the calibration of the Ashokan Erosion Rate Model. By studying 36 banks with differing combinations of BHI and NBS over a two-year period, we were able to establish their erosion rate. By plotting that measured erosion rate by their combined BHI and NBS score, we were able to develop the predictive curves that we're validating today. This behind me is bank 42 on the Esopus Creek. It's a very high beehive and a low NBS. Now interestingly, we didn't come across this combination very much during model calibration, but we expect to see somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2 feet of bank retreat in a normal year that doesn't see a large flood event. And so we'll see what we come up with today when we measure. So you might be saying that bank erosion in a stream system is a natural process, and you'd be absolutely right. But accelerated or excess bank erosion is not natural. It's often caused by watershed development or improper stream management techniques. Excess stream bank erosion leads to an excess sediment supply in the system. As that sediment works its way downstream, it can lead to a process called aggradation, where the stream channel basically fills itself in with sediment. And this can make flooding problems worse. And in a spot like this where you have a bridge downstream or perhaps where you have some buildings or infrastructure, you don't want to make flooding any worse. These Ashokan erosion rate curves allow us to locate highly unstable reaches, quantify the sediment coming out of those stream banks, and prioritize our restoration projects based on reducing that sediment supply. Reducing that sediment supply will help mitigate flood impacts downstream and help to improve channel stability. So until next time, so long from the pleasantly cool Asopus Creek on a very hot summer day.